Ring, ring, ring. Postman. Who this? Cherry the Horse. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Jerry, and I have a very small forehead. I have a three head. <laughs> and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I apply my lace frontals um, with this extremely small forehead. All right, all right. So the first thing I do is start off with flat ironed hair. I have permed hair, so it kind of always stays flat ironed if it's not in a protective hairstyle. And then I parted it at the side and put it into a small bun in the back. I do this method because I'm really not that good at corn rowing and it's kind of faster for me because you know the whole process of putting on a wig is a lot. <laughs> but after that I just clean off my forehead with a makeup wipe just to get off all the excess oil and makeup I may have on my forehead. Then I took my Even New York 24 hour edge control and I placed this on my edges just so I could pull them back. This just makes it so any glue or tape I put on top or near my edges is not going to be very damaging to it because I am going to be putting a wig cap on on top of it. I'm using my brown wig cap because it's kind of closer to my skin tone rather than the tan one. And then I take the other side of a rat tail comb and just start pushing my edges back a little bit more because they did come up a little bit. And like I said, I'm just keeping my edges out of the way and pulled back so they don't get, you know, damaged. Then I take my got to be glue. I'm using the black bottle because that's what I picked up. I don't know the difference between them. But I put the gel on top of my edges as well as near them because I don't have a lot of forehead space. And when I move my wig up too, too high on my head, it looks very wiggy. It looks really weird. It looks like I don't have even more forehead space. It looks like I have a two head. <laughs> so I have to try to put the wig cap up as much as possible but still blend it into my forehead because I do have like three or four widow's peaks working with me right now. I have a lot of hair. I don't. My hair doesn't recede. It, uh, it comes forward. <laughs> After that, I just pull the wig cap down as far as possible just so that little dark line on it isn't touching any of my edges. And then I take my finger and start smoothing down that gel onto the wig cap to make sure it's transferring. And as you can see, I had to adjust the wig cap a little bit. Basically, that spandex part, you don't want it to touch your edges. Then I took the Got To Be Glue spray and started to spray my edges with it and started to smooth it out again. After everything was smoothed out, I took my blow dryer and put it on its coolest setting and started to blow dry that gel just to make sure it was all dry before I cut off the wig cap. Um, it took about maybe five or six minutes for it to dry all the way, surprisingly. So after that, I took off the access wig cap with some scissors and I took my time doing this and whenever I get to my ear, it always kind of rolls up, but that's never really an issue with me when I put on my wig because you never really see my wig past my ear unless I want it to be I don't know I can't, I can't explain it but it's never a real problem you know so I just let that ride but basically everything else was dry and I just kept on cutting till all that access um, wig cap was off and I tried to get as close to my hairline as possible because like I said uh, I can't pull my wig past my own hairline because it looks very wiggy so whenever I had a section of the wig cap glued down that I didn't want glued down I just pulled it up a little bit with my fingers or kind of jiffied it up a little bit with my fingers and the scissors and just cut it off real quick. So after I got as much as the stocking cap as I thought I needed off, I took my wig and tried it on and started to just, you know, measure out how and where I wanted my wig to lay. I saw that my stocking cap was way too far up on my forehead still, so I started to push it back with a rat tail comb just to measure out, you know, how much of it I needed to cut off. And I just did this all around the perimeter of my forehead. So once I took the wig off, all I had to do was just cut off that excess uh, stocking cap. Thank you. 
once everything was cut off again i took my makeup wipe and a little bit of alcohol on it and just started to clean off my forehead just to make sure no excess glue was going to get in the way of my wig tape because if you don't know any oil or anything other than a plain surface for the wig tape it starts to come up too early usually for me the wig tape lasts is about i would give it like two three days i don't know like i usually take off my wig when i go to bed but um if i do leave it on i leave it on for about three days and the wig tape basically helps that basically i can't really tell you guys the true longevity of wig tape because i take my wig off often okay and the wig that i'm wearing today is from hair spells it's the brazilian 300 percent density loose wave lace frontal in 22 inches Woo! <laughs> that was a lot to say and it came in this little purple bag i've only had the hair for about a week so i don't have a full review on it but it's soft hair it doesn't shed a lot at all it's tameable and the curls are just really really pretty I don't know this is the first time that I actually really like the curl pattern and I don't really manipulate it I just kind of wear it as is so I'd say the most important step before you even put your wig down is to make sure all the hair is out of its way of the wig tape because you don't want your hair to get into the wig tape and then it's just like a whole bunch of mess and you got to take the wig tape up basically it's no good <laughs> like you're gonna have to start all over again so make sure everything is pulled back so the hair doesn't get in there so after all my hair is pulled back I pull the wig forward a little bit farther than usual and then I pull it back a little bit shimmy it back a little and measure out where I want it to sit at then I take both of my hands and push the wig downwards just to make sure the tape is catching the wig and it's not going to come up after that I noticed that I did have a little bit of wig tape showing as well as more lace frontal than I needed if that makes sense this wasn't really an issue all I had to do was take my scissors and just cut off that excess lace as well as tape all I had to do for the tape was basically shimmy it off a little bit After everything was positioned well in my head, or I felt that everything was positioned well in my head, I put my hair back into a little ponytail and started to make my baby hairs. So obviously baby hairs are optional, but what I find is that when you do baby hairs, it kind of camouflages the lace. I don't know how to explain it, but the first thing you see is the baby hairs and not the lace. And the baby hairs are kind of just laying on top of it. So I feel like although, you know, it's very optional to do baby hairs, everyone has like an issue with it. It still kind of helps in the blending process, you know. And forewarning, I'm obviously not that good with my baby hairs. You know, don't don't come for me in the comment section. I am trying. <laughs> I do try. Um, but after that, I put my hair in this little cotton scarf and make sure it's nice and tight on my edges that way while i'm styling my wig my edges are laying flatter and it helps with the blending process then i took my fantasia mega hold spritz and i sprayed this on the side part of my head just so it could pull back and go in one direction you can use hair mousse but spritz works for me and i don't have hair mousse <laughs> so i kind of just rely on that and to flatten my wig a little bit more i took a flat iron to the other side of the part but I didn't drag the flat iron all the way down because I still wanted it to maintain the curls. So I just kept it at the top and pulled it downwards at an angle. That way, you know, I was getting that flat look with it. I don't know, like the basically, you know, if you want your wig to lay really, really flat, flat iron it before you put it on your head. For some reason, I forgot that. <laughs> so I was left flat ironing it afterwards and it still worked out okay. And then I took some powder, the same skin tone as me, and placed that onto the lace just so it could blend even more. And this step actually really really helped because after I was done putting my makeup on the wig I could barely see the wig like this step was the most essential and obviously I put it along my part as well just so you wouldn't see like the little dots inside of the lace and basically my final step was just trying to do my baby hairs again because I don't know like doing it on a wig is really hard versus doing it on my own hair <laughs> but I think I did a good job tell me what you guys think um I hope this really helps somebody out here because I was struggling like I have such a small forehead basically the um the stocking cap method really helps to keep your edges out of the way and to measure where you want your wig to stay so even if you want your wig to be on top of your edges literally on top of it the stocking cap 
chat will help you seamlessly do that you know so without further ado thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed some of what you think about this video this is the final look like i said i co-washed this hair and did nothing else to it and i love the curl pattern it literally just falls right into place so without further ado thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoy i hope this helped share it if it does and i will see you in my next video bye you guys Thank you.